Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday, the 13th day of August. I'm Father Eric and I am here at the chapel in Charles House. And I want to thank uh, Carol Cowell for doing the arrangements of flowers again to beautify our chapel. And this morning we will learn about the life, celebrate the life of Florence Nightingale, a familiar name, and we'll read her biography. Morning Prayer Rite 1 begins on page 42 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue this day with the Invitatory Psalm. We will read Christ, our Passover, which can be found on page 46 of the prayer book. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. We continue with the psalm pointed for today. That is Psalm 73. We're going to read verses 23 through 29. Verse 23 begins on page 688 of the prayer book. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will speak of all your works and in the gates of the city of Zion. We continue with the reading assigned for this morning. We are going to read um, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning at the fourth verse. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 11, which can be found on page 87. It is the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. 
Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Florence Nightingale was born in Florence, Italy on May 12, 1820. She was trained as a nurse at Kaiserwerth in 1851 and Paris and in 1853 became superintendent of a hospital for invalid women in London. In response to God's call and animated by a spirit of service, in the year 1854, she volunteered for, for duty during the Crimean War and recruited 38 nurses to join her. With them, she organized the first modern nursing service in the British field hospitals of Sochori and Baklavla. By imposing strict discipline and high standards of sanitation, she radically reduced the drastic death toll and rampant infection that then typical in field hospitals. She returned to England in the year 1856, and a fund of £50,000 was subscribed to enable her to form an institution for the training of nurses at St. Thomas's Hospital and at King's College Hospital. Her school at St. Thomas's Hospital became significant in helping to elevate nursing into a profession. She devoted many years to the question of army sanitary reform, to the improvement of nursing and to public health in India. Her main work, Notes on Nursing, published in the year 1859, went through many editions. An Anglican, she remained committed to a personal mystical religion which sustained her through many years of poor health until her death in the year 1910. Till the end of her life, although her illness prevented her from leaving her home, she continued in frequent spiritual conversation with many prominent church leaders of the day, including the local parish priest who regularly brought communion to her. By the time of her death on August 13, 1910, her reputation as a healer and holy person had assumed mythical proportions, and she is honored throughout the world as the founder of the modern profession of nursing. We continue our service by saying together the Apostles' Creed, which, can, which begins on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. We begin by saying the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We continue with the colics. Life-giving God, thou alone hast power over life and death, over health and sickness. Give power, wisdom, and gentleness unto those who follow the lead of Florence Nightingale, that they, bearing with them thy presence, may not only heal but bless, and shine as lanterns of hope in the darkest hours of pain and fear. To Jesus Christ, the healer of body and soul, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings this day. We pray for our entire parish and for our school. We pray for the eventual safe reopening of both. We pray for all who are sick or facing adversity. We pray for healing and strength and courage. We especially pray for those who are isolated at this time, lonely. We pray that their spirits may be uplifted. We pray for our country and for the world. Pray for peace. We pray for a, peer, a spirit of understanding that your grace and love may permeate all of creation. I invite your prayers and supplications. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that still reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the spirit of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks for joining today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Thursday. God bless.